And welcome to Talk of the Town on KQNA 1130 AM and 99.9 FM and throughout the galaxy on KQNA.com. We've got our usual lineup of distinguished humans today. Later in the show, we'll chat with the city's top elected officials. That's Mayor Marlon Kirkendall and Mayor Pro Tem Jim Lamerson. Plus, following in the wake of our recent show about the health of Watson Lake, hosted by none other than Sandy Moss, we'll learn about a system that affects it most, Prescott's Creeks with Amanda Richardson. But first up, we'll meet a counselor and alternative health practitioner, Ellie Pachette. She'll help us uh, sort of sort out those pesky New Year's resolutions and much, much more and how to handle those. So pull over, put your feet up on the dash, and crank up the volume for this edition of Talk of the Town. KQNA, 1130 AM and 99.9 FM and KQNA.com. We'll be right back. And we are back with counselor and metaphysical healer Ellie Pachette. She does past life readings, which I'm fascinated by. I really want to get into that. Do we have time to just do my whole life and just forget about every, everything else? No, we don't? Okay. Uh, she does Reiki and therapy and a number of other interesting techniques. But in the wake also of New Year's Eve and people making these New Year's resolutions, it puts a lot of pressure on humans, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And uh, so how do we like kind of just... Wipe the slate slain, and why do we do what? Wipe the slate, slain, <laughs> wipe the slate <laughs> clean, and start fresh for the year. And and what kind of pressure does that put on us? And how do you help your clients sort of work through that? Yeah, that, that's a great point, Kim. Um, basically, uh, I use the pochette healing technique, which is uh, a technique that I have developed uh, over the course of 28 years of being in the counseling and energy healing field, and. Uh, if you really want to get right to the point, the best way to, to wipe the slate clean, uh, especially for the, the year to come, is by clearing emotional issues, emotional issues mm. and symptoms that people are still carrying around with them. All right. You know, you, you mentioned things here like uh, draining thoughts and limiting beliefs. I mean, I have all these things. I'm having draining thoughts right now. <laughs> so, how? I mean, how do you... Uh, approach that and, and, and just in conversation it's easier said than done but what's the process of sort of releasing yourself you know from these things that we that we all carry around except for maybe Sandy Moss in the studio today who is uh, just it's, it's a zen situation over there she seems very calm <laughs> she looks very calm she does I hate her for that <laughs> I'm nervous as hell well you might want to start there Kim yeah I know really <laughs> it's not good to hate <laughs> um, you know um the first thing is awareness, being aware of, of where your thoughts are taking you and, and how they make you feel. Uh, thoughts are things, and so if you notice that you're, you're thinking any kind of a negative thought, the best thing to do is, once you notice it, change the channel like you would on, on an old-fashioned TV. Mm -hmm. You know, just change the dial and, and uh, refocus on something that makes you feel good, that makes you feel positive. So it's redirecting your thoughts. So yeah. if you're having negative thoughts or negative feelings, you just kind of redirect. So you got to really be conscious of what you're thinking. Yes. And all right, so a client comes to you, and, and you have a, a little different way. You have a conventional counseling background and training. Yes. And, um, and, so, and you have unconventional or, or alternative training and experience as well. How do you meld those two, and when do you decide that – this person requires a little more of this, more of the traditional, let's, uh, you know, a client-centered therapy type approach versus sort of a metaphysical approach. Well, you know, I, I, um, I, I combine the, the two. I combine my skills from being in the field since 1982. I started out doing regular traditional counseling, and my, uh, my motivation was really to help clients shift and, and make progress as quickly as possible. Uh, I realize that traditional counseling alone is very slow, and that's why it, it doesn't. It, it's just not as effective as combining uh, energy work with counseling. What I do in a typical session is uh, talk with the client about what you know, what seems to be most on their mind or, or on their heart that's bothering them. Uh, it could be low self-esteem, uh, lack of confidence grief, uh, old trauma, childhood sexual abuse, for example, and whatever seems to be the most pertinent issue at the time is what we'll, we'll spend some time doing some talk therapy, uh, clarifying, uh, and, and getting some, a, a better understanding about the issue, and then at a certain point in the session, I will 
energetically clear the issue. And what I, does that mean? Well, I, I yeah. <laughs> Explain <laughs> I, that to me. I, I work with uh, uh, the deepest level possible with people, which is the cellular level. And uh, what I do is I intuit the exact wording of the issue that needs to be cleared or the trauma or the, the grief or the memory. And, uh, and then I send the energy through my hand. Mm -hmm. And the result is that the client feels a sense of warmth in their chest. Uh, often they'll, they'll feel tingling in their fingers and their, uh, their legs. Mm -hmm. uh, and this indicates that there's a profound shift happening mm -hmm. uh, on an energetic level. Well, anyway, by the end of the session, uh, I'll use a pain scale of zero to 10 uh, so that the client will identify, usually it's between an eight and a 10 um, in terms of the, the charge around the issue. And by the end of the session, it's down to a zero. Mm -hmm. And I'd so say- So sort of like a biofeedback. So uh, in a way, are they thinking, you know, they're trying to think calming thoughts, redirecting No, they thoughts. don't have to you, do they anything. They don't have to do anything. You're just transferring energy or moving energy via touch. Is this the Reiki? In it's the not thing? using touch. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I do Reiki also, but mm -hmm. this is much more powerful than Reiki. Mm -hmm. This is uh, sending the energy through my hand and it literally uh, changing the, the, the memory in the cells. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what... Um, that's what makes people feel this almost overwhelming sense of well-being and peace and deep relaxation mm. uh, that lasts beyond the session. But the most important thing is that a significant issue gets cleared, literally cleared, and it's permanent every session. Mm. So it's so much more efficient than regular um, talk psychotherapy, therapy. which can yeah. take, you know, like Months 20 years. years. You know, psychotherapists, I think, go to school for decades just to be psychotherapy, you know, like yeah. Freudian psychotherapists. Yeah. And then, consequently, all their patients end up paying the price because they stay in therapy for right. like 20 years. That's and right. Woody Allen, I guess, is always a classic <laughs> example of that. He's a good so example. So I'm, I'm sure going, you know, for... Uh, you know, uh, more directly towards a result, you know, a quicker result, I, I'm sure is very welcome. Now, um, in some of your publicity materials that you've been referred to as the ghost whisperer, and I'm sure you'll love these kind of monikers that uh, get hung on you. Uh, what, what are they referring to in, in that facet of, of your practice? Well, that's, um, they're referring to my ability to, um, uh, well, I have a very developed intuitive mm -hmm. ability, and so I can, um, uh, it, it helps me to, to intuit mm -hmm. uh, what the most important session, what the most important issues are for the clients. Mm -hmm. And I'm also able to hear uh, people who have passed on. And uh, so sometimes that will come up during a session or uh, sometimes clients ask for that specifically, mm -hmm. like to speak with a, a mother who passed on, a grandmother, a father. Mm -hmm. And I can, you know, I, I deliver pretty accurate uh, mm -hmm. uh, results. Now, is this an intuition that you felt at a younger age? You know, and, and it's really interesting. They've done the, get the Gallup poll, I guess, is actually they've done uh, surveys as to how many people, you know, believe in the paranormal or psychic uh, phenomenon or whatever versus people who are cynical. I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle, you know, and I've had, I think we've all had experiences where you've, had an intuition or somebody has had an intuition without talking to you about you and you go how did you know that you know and I could swear my mother was psychic she always knew when something yeah was so I mean did you do the <laughs> and now my wife you know no matter what I'm thinking she seems to be able to pick out and I get it I get in trouble quite a bit so whatever the case it, it is a, a heightened sensitivity yes and, and did you feel this early on that you or w did this develop um, over time? And I, as you I, worked with people I, more? Yes, I, I did. As a child, I was able to intuit things and just know things mm -hmm. about people that, uh, uh, that that most people weren't aware of. Mm -hmm. um, intuition is really about different levels of ability to uh, to hear and see and mm -hmm. sense things on mm -hmm. a uh, uh, on a higher level. Mm -hmm. Talk about there. There was uh, one of your clients um, whose father had passed away, and uh, he and his father used to make omelets together. Do you recall that? Oh that yeah. Thing? Tell <laughs> a little bit about that. To me, that that's a perfect example of um, you know being perceptive and being intuitive. And um, 
I think what was conveyed to him in that therapy uh, was ultimately very helpful and very interesting. If you could tell, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, uh, I was doing a, a, a number of different, uh, uh, well, different work with, uh, with Jeff, and uh, he had come originally for more uh, traditional counseling, and uh, I also did the clearing work with him on, on some childhood issues that he had. We, we progressed into that, uh, which is a matter of, you know, when people are ready for the, for the more advanced work that I do, uh, we'll do it, but I, it's important for me to be respectful about where clients are at and how much they can handle and how quickly they want to make progress. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so uh, his father passed away, and this was very difficult for him, and he asked if I could contact his father uh, during one of the sessions, and uh, so I said yes, and I, I did, and his father started, he appeared and started talking about um, making omelets in the kitchen and described the kitchen of the client where he was living at the time mm -hmm. uh, to let him know that he was there, that he was present and, and with him. Right, and this is something that they shared. They would make omelets together, yeah. you know, and his father was alive and it was kind of a bonding experience. Yes, it was. So right. by pointing that out to him, you know, both on a, on a traditional therapeutic level, you had pointed out something that was really a, a bonding experience that the one who was left, the son, you know, was grieving and had stopped doing this. And he would buy, you know, the, the makings for an omelet and just let it rot because he was trying to get to the point where he could still continue to do that, do that yeah. and enjoy it and invoke the memory of his father, but couldn't quite break through. Yeah, that. yeah. So, so bringing him through... Uh, it was very therapeutic mm -hmm. for him to know that his father was there, and it mm -hmm. was it was comforting, and and he decided to start making omelets again, knowing that his father was was there doing this with him. Right. So yeah. ultimately, that's that sort of the breakthrough yes. right there. So he was able to work through his grief and get back to and, and get closure. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Really interesting. Now, this the past life regression. I'm sorry if we if we're going into you don't want to talk about that. Okay, because that's like my favorite thing. <laughs> we got three minutes, so let's talk a little bit about. Um, what you do, you, you actually can do uh, by distance. It doesn't necessarily have to be in, in a one-to-one -one situation personally. That's right. right. Yes, yeah, so I've worked as far uh, with clients as Hong Kong, which mm -hmm. is about a 12-hour time difference. I have clients in Florida and the East Coast, California. Um, it, it's really just about uh, my ability to connect with people energetically uh, so it really doesn't matter where they are. Mm -hmm. That's why it works. So typically, um, tell, me, tell me a little bit about your clientele, you know, how it sort of breaks down, what they come to you for in, in general. If you look at your practice, uh, is it stopping smoking? Is it uh, uh, relationship problems, depression? I, I deal with, uh, with addictions. Um, I would say that the, the more common issues people come to me for help with are depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, phobias, childhood sexual abuse, mm -hmm. unresolved uh, childhood issues, um, grief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do people find you? Now, you're, you were based in Mass Massachusetts. Uh, talk about that a little. Uh, do you have a website? I um, do have a website. It's uh, phoenixrisinghealing.com. Uh, that's phoenixrisinghealing.com, and my phone number, uh, which has been the same for about 20 years, is 508-237-4929. That's 508-237-4929. And for uh, people in the region uh, that want to do an office visit, do you take office hours? I do, yeah, yeah. Um, I work with clients in person, and uh, I'm located in Prescott, um, and, and they can, call, you to make they an can call me to make an appointment uh, over the phone or in person. Very good. Ellie Bichette, thank you very much for yeah, being with us. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. I'm going to pin you down on past life regression sometime. we got to go back. <laughs> Maybe we next go time back. we'll Maybe talk about time. that. I know we need a little more time. This <laughs> okay. is Talk of the Town, KQNA 1130 AM and 99.9 .9 FM and worldwide on KQNA.com. Come on back for us.